What's up, traders? Welcome back to the Caffeinated Traders Lounge, where we serve up hot brews and even hotter market insights every Sunday. Grab your favorite cup of caffeine because today, we're diving deep into last week's biggest economic data drops and breaking down what it means for the markets, especially in the Forex game. Whether you're new here or one of the regulars, you know we keep things fun, caffeinated, and packed with all the juicy data you need to stay ahead. From non-farm payrolls to PMIs and inflation figures, we're covering the key events that shook up the markets and we'll look at what's coming next. How will this play out in the Forex and stock markets this week? And hey, I've got some top trade ideas to share at the end, so definitely stick around for those. Get ready to see how these moves are impacting key currency pairs like EURUSD, GBPUSD, and USDJPY, and what to watch for as we dive into another action-packed trading week. Buckle up. This is going to be good. Let's jump in. USD, the dollar drama. Still the king of the hill? First up, the US dollar, USD, which continues to act like the prom king of the currency world, strutting around the dance floor while everyone wonders how long it can keep up the act. Last week's data definitely had us all rethinking our dollar trades. Let's start with consumer credit, which fell off a cliff, dropping to 8.93 billion, way below expectations. This is a sign that Americans are tightening their belts and if consumers aren't borrowing, they're likely not spending as much either. That could lead to a slowdown in economic growth. But before you start shorting the dollar, hold on. Because the labor market is still flexing its muscles. We got a whopping 254,000 new jobs in September, and unemployment held steady at 4.1%, proving the U.S. economy isn't out of steam just yet. Add to that the 4% jump in U.S. Treasury yields, which made dollar bulls feel like they just won the lottery. The CPI data was a bit of a curveball, though, up only 0.2%, bringing year-over-year -year inflation down to 2.4%, the slowest rise in three years. That's leading some to think the Fed could start cutting rates in 2024. Rate cut speculation could cool off the dollar rally eventually, but for now, it seems to be riding high on solid job growth and strong yields. EUR the Eurozone Shuffle. Slowing down or ready to bounce. The Euro, EUR, had its fair share of drama too, though it seems more like a soap opera where nothing quite goes according to plan. German business sentiment took a nosedive according to the IFO survey, with retail businesses especially gloomy. The Centix index barely budged from its negative 21.5 reading, creeping up to negative 13.8. But let's be honest. When you're still in negative territory, it's hard to pop the champagne. Germany's industrial production, however, gave the euro some hope with a surprising 2.9% increase in August, driven by a 19.3% surge in the automotive sector. Finally, some good news for VW fans. But don't get too excited, as factory orders fell by 5.8%, suggesting that the industrial recovery might be short-lived. And although the Eurozone managed a hefty trade surplus of 22.5 billion euros, inflation-adjusted numbers tell a less rosy story. The ECB may still be forced into another rate cut if things don't turn around soon, which could keep the euro on the back foot. Oh, and let's not forget the ongoing energy crisis, which is still keeping European policymakers up at night. High energy costs continue to weigh heavily on the region, and if oil prices remain elevated, we might see more pressure on the euro moving forward. GBP, the British pound soap opera. All the drama, none of the stability. If the eurozone situation feels like a soap opera, the British pound, GBP, is straight out of a reality TV show, full of unexpected plot twists and questionable decisions. Last week's labor market data gave us plenty to chew on, and unfortunately, the news wasn't great. Wage growth has slowed, and there were fewer job placements than expected, leading to speculation that the Bank of England, BOE, might finally give in to rate cuts. And we all know what that means. More weakness for the pound. Consumer spending was all over the place, too. Entertainment spending soared thanks to events like the Oasis reunion, because apparently the 90s are back. But essential spending dropped by a massive 5%, the biggest fall since 2020. 
Rent prices are sky high due to insane tenant demand, but that's only adding to the overall cost of living crisis. And while the housing market showed some signs of life, inflation is still squeezing household budgets. In short, the pound is like a boat in a storm right now, struggling to stay afloat. If inflation in the UK continues to ease, it'll strengthen the case for the bailee to cut rates sooner rather than later. And let's face it, that could push the pound down even further, especially against the dollar, which is currently enjoying its time in the spotlight. AUD, the kangaroo hopping toward trouble? The Australian dollar got a little bit of love last week, thanks to a 6.2% surge in consumer sentiment, hitting its highest level in two years. Aussies were feeling good about the Reserve Bank of Australia keeping rates on hold, but there's trouble brewing beneath the surface. Inflation is still running hot, and household consumption took a hit, signaling that the good vibes might not last. And let's talk about China for a second, Australia's biggest trading partner. Chinese demand for Australian commodities, especially iron ore, has been weakening, and if China's economic growth disappoints this week, more on that later, the Aussie could be in for a tough ride. Commodity prices are already feeling the heat, and if they drop further, the AUD could be hopping toward trouble. NZD. The Kiwis got problems over in New Zealand. The Kiwi dollar is still under pressure, and for good reason. The country posted a bigger-than-expected budget deficit of $12.85 billion, which has raised a few eyebrows. Low productivity growth isn't doing the Kiwi any favors either, and it's becoming increasingly clear that without stronger economic growth, the New Zealand dollar is likely to remain stuck in the mud. One small silver lining, net government debt came in slightly better than expected at 42.5% of GDP, but that's hardly enough to keep the Kiwi afloat in the face of these broader economic challenges. Expect further weakness here unless we see a major turnaround in growth or trade dynamics. CAD Oil prices Aren't the loonies best friend anymore? The Canadian dollar didn't have much to cheer about last week either. Canada's trade deficit ballooned to $1.1 billion, far worse than the expected $500 million gap. The main culprit? A drop in energy exports. Rising oil prices aren't helping the loony much either, since they're also driving up inflation and making the Bank of Canada's job more complicated. Speculation is growing that the Bank of Canada might cut rates, especially with the Canadian economy showing signs of cooling. If that happens, expect the loonie to face even more downward pressure, particularly against the USD, which is still benefiting from strong yields and solid economic growth. JPY, the yen's tug of war, inflation, energy, and the BOJ's dilemma. The yen had a mixed week, to say the least. Real wages dropped by 0.6%, which sounds bad, but base salaries actually jumped by 3.0%, marking the biggest increase in 32 years. Consumer sentiment also improved, even though household spending continued to fall. So, what's going on here? It's like the yen can't decide whether it wants to rally or stay weak. The Bank of Japan is stuck in a bit of a dilemma. If inflation remains above 2%, the BOJ might be forced to tighten monetary policy, which could boost the yen. However, rising energy prices, thanks in part to global geopolitical tensions, are keeping the yen weak as Japan imports most of its energy. So the yen remains caught in a tug of war between inflation, energy costs, and the BOJ's next move. Upcoming week's key data releases. What to watch now? Let's shift gears and look at the upcoming week. Here are the key data releases you need to watch that could shake up the Forex markets. China GDP, Q3. China's GDP data is critical, especially for commodity currencies like the AUD and NZD. If China's growth disappoints, the Aussie and Kiwi could be headed for more pain. Given Australia's reliance on Chinese demand, this is one to watch closely. U.S. retail sales, U.S. retail sales data will give us a better idea of how strong consumer spending really is. If the numbers come in hot, it'll reinforce the idea that the U.S. economy is still humming along, which could support the dollar further. A weak report, though, could signal cracks in consumer demand, 
which might weaken the USD-UK CPI. The UK's inflation data will be crucial for the GBP. If inflation continues to cool, it could increase the likelihood of a BOE rate cut, which would weigh on the pound. On the flip side, a surprise jump in inflation could give the pound a much-needed boost. Eurozone inflation Eurozone inflation figures will also be closely watched. A weaker print could cement expectations of an ECB rate cut, pressuring the euro. A hotter-than-expected number could have the opposite effect, supporting the euro, at least in the short term. Bank of Japan Policy Meeting Minutes The BOJ Meeting Minutes will offer clues on whether the bank is leaning toward tightening monetary policy. If there's any hint of a shift, the yen could rally. But if the BOJ stays dovish, expect the yen to remain under pressure. Bringing it all together Currency relationships and what's next. So, what's the bottom line for traders this week? The U.S. dollar is still looking strong, but retail sales will be key to watch for signs of any cracks in the economy. The euro and pound are facing major risks from their respective inflation data, while the Aussie and Kiwi will be glued to China's GDP report. The yen could go either way depending on BOJ minutes and energy prices, while the loonie remains vulnerable to weak trade data and oil price volatility. My best guess on major pairs. EURUSD. Likely to stay under pressure unless Eurozone inflation surprises to the upside. GBPUSD. BOE rate cut speculation could keep it lower, but inflation data might throw a curveball. AUDUST. Will depend heavily on China's GDP numbers. Bad news could spell trouble. NZDUSD. More downside is likely unless there's a surprise boost in growth. USDCAD. Could see further loony weakness, especially if oil prices stay volatile. USDJPY. Keep an eye on BOJ minutes and energy prices. Volatility ahead. Thanks for sticking around, traders. I hope your coffee was as strong as the market moves we just covered. If you found this breakdown helpful and want to keep that trading edge sharp, we're here every Sunday to fuel your week ahead. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a beat. Join the Caffeinated Traders Lounge, where we serve up fresh market insights with a side of caffeine to keep you ahead of the game. Until next time, stay caffeinated, stay trading, and I'll catch you in the next one.